Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Maybe give me a thumbs up if you can hear okay. Perfect. Um, it's just about 5.30. I'm going to give uh, everyone a few more minutes and then we will get started. We appreciate your tenants tonight. So if you could bear with us for about two minutes. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are now a couple minutes after 5.30 and out of respect for everyone's time, we will get started. Uh, first and foremost, from the city of Elmhurst, we appreciate the attendance of everyone either on video or listening in tonight. Uh, we hope this is an informative session for uh, residents and uh, neighbors alike in this area. So thank you. Uh, my name is Kent Johnson. I'll give a brief introduction uh, shortly. Um, I'm happy to host this open house tonight on behalf of the engineering department at the city. I'm happy to see that we have a good turnout. Uh, we have multiple elected officials, uh, both of the Ward 1. Um, Alderwomen are on the, uh, the call tonight, Alderman Deuter and Alderman Vremus. Thank you for attending. Uh, also see Alderman Kennedy on the phone. Thanks, Alderman Kennedy. And we have Public Works Director Stan Balicki as well. So thank you very much for attending. Um, just a couple housekeeping items. I believe that everyone is muted. Um, I do have that control. So. Uh, if for some reason you are unmuted and just out of respect for everyone else, if you could mute yourself, that'd be great. It's totally up to you if you want to turn your video on or not. Uh, we will have a chance to correspond with you and uh, hopefully answer some questions um, at the end of the presentation tonight. Um, with that, I will get started um, and I will share my screen. I'll go through a PowerPoint presentation that we prepared tonight to hopefully answer some of your questions. All right, I'm gonna ask for a thumbs up real quick if you can see the uh, PowerPoint on the screen. Thank you very much, sincerely appreciate that. This is our first virtual open house. So if there's any uh, technology issues, I do apologize. We tried to do a dry run tonight and hopefully we'll go through this smoothly. Again, this is the open house for the College View Stormwater Improvement Project. Uh, College View is the neighborhood surrounding uh, York High School, as many of you probably are already aware. Tonight, we hope to have a brief introduction. Uh, I already went through a, a couple of the uh, key people that are on this call tonight. Uh, we're gonna keep that to hopefully five minutes or less. We're gonna go through this PowerPoint presentation, uh, which should be about 15 minutes. And then the rest of the time tonight, we're leaving open-ended for a question and answer. Um, as we go through the slides, if you do have a question, please feel free to use the chat function. Um, that would probably be the easiest way. And at the end of the presentation, if there's any questions in chat, we'll try to go through them. If for some reason we don't get to your question, uh, my contact information is at the, on the last slide. Please feel free to send me a direct email. Uh, or if in your chat question, you are willing to put your email address and your address, we'd be happy to reach out to you directly. As many of you probably know, uh, we're here because of stormwater flooding tonight. Um, the city has experienced historic flooding in multiple years, um, September 2008, June 2010, July 2010, that's a typo on the screen, I apologize, and April of 2013. Uh, most, if not all those events were what we call 100 year rain events where you see a 100 year duration um, in a given time period. And that time period could be 24 hours or it could be 
15 to 30 minutes. Uh, some of these events, um, the September 08 and April 13th, we saw a long uh, drawn out volume of water um, somewhere in the seven to eight inch uh, magnitude in 12 to 24 hours. And in June or July of 2010, we saw a shorter duration, but uh, a shorter duration can actually cause the same amount of flooding. And if any of you were around in the summer of 2015, the night the Hawks won the cup, um, this particular neighborhood had a very quick intense rain event that was only about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, but if any of you were there, you do remember the street flooding that we did experience. So again, when we say 100 year duration, it is a probability. It is not that we um, expect it to happen every 100 years. Um, it's just that it has a one in 100 chance of happening in any given year. That's, that's kind of a good way to kind of narrow down that, that definition. So after the city experienced these flooding events, the city hired uh, one of the foremost experts in uh, the civil engineering field and hydraulics, Christopher Burke Engineering, to help us develop a comprehensive flood plan. It was important to the elected officials um, to respond to the residents and try to come up with ideas, um, ways we could reduce flooding and also look at costs. How much is this gonna cost so we can uh, vet the projects and also um, start talking about funding. So in total, Burke did two studies for us, one that they completed in 2012 and one that they completed in 2014. Uh, those two studies collectively looked at 13 areas across the city from north to south, from east to west. And so they encompassed the, um, the larger areas of flooding where there were multiple homes having issues in terms of uh, these floodwaters leaving the street and coming up towards houses. Since 2015, which is when the city um, started construction on some of these projects, we've installed 12 stormwater projects across the city. In total, those 12 projects have added 120 acre feet of new detention to the city. Um, to put that in perspective, an acre foot is about the size of a football field, roughly one foot deep of water. So if you start thinking about 120 football fields stacked on top of each other, one foot deep, you can get a little bit of an idea of the enormity of the volume that we've added to the Elmhurst system to reduce flooding. And prior to 2015, just because the way our town was built out and historically what people did when they added subdivisions, um, there were very little uh, stormwater detention basins in Elmhurst. If you go out west into the, um, what I'll call the sprawling suburbs, maybe Sugar Grove, um, or even farther south, south of Joliet, those subdivisions that are currently going in are being developed with new stormwater standards um, that engineers have put together for today. So there is not a subdivision you will see being built out in those areas that does not have detention ponds incorporated in the design. Unfortunately, most of Elmhurst was built out by the 50s and 60s, and people just didn't think about stormwater they did the way they do today. And certainly we're reacting to the rain events that have occurred over the last 10, 20 years. In total, since 2015, the city has spent almost $40 million on construction and land acquisition. Uh, we did have to purchase or acquire easements. And we also purchased uh, land from the park district and private property owners. In total, there were 12 homes that the city purchased and tore down uh, in order to provide room for these stormwater projects and two commercial properties, which were actually churches that we uh, purchased part of their uh, overall property to facilitate new detention. And in total, roughly 450 homes have had overland flooding uh, reductions. Most of those have are now protected from any 100 year level of protection. Our goal would be with any stormwater project that we take everybody out of every um, flooding risk. It's not feasible all the time, uh, but I, I'm proud to say that most of the 450 have, again, complete 100 year level of protection. So specifically looking at the College View area, it's a really large tributary area um, that heads ultimately to a stormwater pump station on the west side of 83. I'm gonna use my cursor to circle the yellow dot on the left side of the screen. That's our stormwater pumping station that's directly across uh, Route 83 from the Portillo site. And that's where all of this water that hits um, a property, a street, anything that drains to a storm structure within this yellow boundary ultimately flows to. It's about 430 acres. It's one of the largest ones we have in the city. 
And really, um, if you think about, if you're one of the residents who live in College View, think about going all the way east to York walking and then going all the way north to the UP tracks, all the way south to St. Charles and all the way west to 83. And you'll start to get a little bit of an idea of how big this area is. Ultimately, all the storm sewers in this area funnel together. Um, Utley, which is just one block north of the high school, is a main trunk storm sewer that's between 60 and 72 inches. And almost every drop of water that gets into a city storm sewer within this yellow bounded area uh, goes to that Utley Road storm sewer and heads directly west through the Quartz Plus site across Route 83 and to our pump station. The pump station is used when Salt Creek is high and we need to get the water out of this system. And so we physically pump it up in elevation into the creek. But in everyday rain events, um, when Salt Creek is not high, we actually don't have to pump. Everything flows from this entire neighborhood via gravity to Salt Creek. So that should help, um, help you understand where water that falls on your driveway, on your patio, ultimately um, exits the city. And uh, you know, eventually all the water in Salt Creek starts heading south into Cook County and continues south from there. So taking a little bit of, of a deeper dive into the area around York High School, um, the blue that you see on the drawing before you represents what the city has uh, studied to be historic flooding. We call it 100 year inundation. And again, it could be after we've had rain for 24 hours. It could be um, after we've had rain for 20 minutes. It really depends on the intensity of the rain. But this is where we've used hydraulic modeling. We've used pictures, videos, email correspondence from the neighbors to really kind of look at where are the limits of flooding. Um, we've done this type of snapshot in every single neighborhood that we've completed a project in. And you'll see a little bit later on in the slides how we compare uh, the post project inundation as well. But uh, if you do live in the neighborhood and you've experienced street flooding or water around your home, these blue um, highlighted areas should be pretty similar to what you've experienced. So in 2014, we had Burke, um, the Burke study included the College View area. And what it noted is that about 17 homes have structural flooding. Structural flooding is what we define as water that leaves the public right away because uh, the city system can't handle it and it's raining uh, intensely and it builds and it builds and it starts going towards houses and it actually touches a house. When the water from the street touches a house, we consider that structural flooding. So it's not water that gets into a house because of seepage, because of a sewer backup. Um, those types of water in the basement can be solved by other means and methods and, and sometimes are considered private property uh, maintenance. But these are, um, structural flooding is the type of flooding that's really out of the control of the resident. And that's where the residents have come to us and said, we need help from the city to reduce this flooding. In that 2014 study by Burke, um, one of the quotes that's on the bottom of the screen was that, the city should look at open space um, to create storage to reduce this flooding. And obviously York High School is a big facility. They have a lot of green space on the south side of the high, high school. So after this 2014 study, we started conversations with the school district about whether we could use that green space for open air detention or actually put detention underground and let the school continue to use those green spaces as they currently do. And for the most part, those are in um, multi-athletic type um, uses. Sometimes they use them for band, sometimes it's baseball or soccer. They're really kind of multi-purpose fields. So to date, uh, just to give you an idea of what the city's done since that uh, 2014 study from Burke, uh, we've created an IGA with the school district um, after many lengthy conversations and negotiations both agencies have come to terms and we have an IGA and intergovernment, excuse me, intergovernmental agreement that gives us permission to put uh, detention for this neighborhood underneath uh, a field in front of their school. And in a couple slides ahead, I will show you exactly where that is. Uh, we've also hired Christopher Burke Engineering to do a topographic survey. That's where surveyors come out and shoot elevations. Um, and they've completed the engineering design of what needs to be done to reduce flooding in the neighborhood. Uh, most importantly, this, the city council looked at uh, how do we pay for a project like this. Uh, in late 2019, the city did a large stormwater bond to help pay for some projects that we have now previously done and also set aside funding for the York High School project amongst 
uh, one other project that's coming up. So it's really important that the city council secured that funding and we went out and got the bond funds. In total, uh, we're looking at a $4.7 million design build contract with Burke. Um, design build is a construction technique where uh, if the engineering is not 100%, um, we can still move forward and start working on a project and modify the design as needed, uh, but we don't lose that time uh, constraint. And we use this design build method on a $5 million project last year in the Sailor Swain Villette area in Southwest Elmhurst, and it worked exceptionally well. On February 1st, the city council will be meeting, that's next Monday, and they are set to review and hopefully approve this design build contract. Lastly, in terms of what's been completed to date, uh, the city has had multiple coordinations with the school district because the school district intends to put a synthetic turf field, again, it's a multi-purpose field on top of our underground detention system that we will be installing. So in a couple slides, you'll see a an example of it, I think it's going to be a really nice product for the community. Before we get into some pictures, I just wanted to give some bullet point summaries of this project. Again, we talked about 17 homes are susceptible to flooding right now. Um, the, the project that we're intending to do this summer will reduce flooding for all 17 of those properties. And as stated, we're looking to use underground detention. Uh, it's a precast concrete vault underneath uh, the grass field on the south side of the school. In total, 8.7 acre feet of detention will be created. And again, if you use a, a rough calculation of a football field one foot deep of water, you can kind of think of the York High School field across the street and almost nine of those football fields stacked on top of each other one foot deep. So gives you a, a definitely an idea of the volume we're dealing with. As shown in the 100 year inundation map on the one of the previous slides, um, Berkeley and Alma intersection is one of the, the hardest hit areas on the southwest side of the school. Um, in order to reduce the flooding, uh, water from that intersection will be directed via new pipes uh, to the east and into this underground detention. And um, stormwater that runs through the York High School site will also be diverted during some of these higher events into the new detention. On Berkeley Avenue, north of the high school between Elm Park and Utley, there's significant flooding right now. We are gonna put in a backflow prevention device um, so that that main trunk sewer, which is running east to west on Utley Road, um, does not back up and cause flooding on Berkeley. That is the primary source of flooding in that particular block, again, on Berkeley between Elm Park and Utley. And uh, the backflow prevention device, according to the Burke engineers, will uh, help significantly reduce the flooding in that area. This exhibit will help you depict how we're going to get water into the underground detention. If you can see on the uh, bottom right hand corner of the screen, the yellow rectangle is the underground detention system. And if you're familiar with York High School, uh, St. Charles Road would be on the bottom of the exhibit. The stoplight uh, would be right here. The center of York High School is directly north of the underground detention, and I believe the, uh, the gymnasium is here on the east, and the more recent uh, west wing, as I'll call it, of the high school here in the top part of the drawing. We are going to add four inlet structures, large inlet structures. They're about three feet by three feet adjacent to the curb um, near the Berkeley and Alma intersection. Whenever the street starts to overflow, water will go into one of these four uh, structures and be piped directly east into this underground detention system. It will be retained there until after the storm event. And after the storm event, we'll use either a pump station or a gravity outlet to get this water back in the system and head on its merry way uh, to the uh, pump station on the west side of 83. We are also going to add some storm sewer piping to peel water off the existing storm sewer on the south side of the York High School building, which will then further help reduce flooding in the neighborhood. The next exhibit gives you a really good indication of how this um, project is going to look if we were able to slice through it vertically. Uh, we call this a cross section. So on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, our underground detention system is going to look something like this you will not even know it's there. I mean, there, there will be kids uh, playing, whether it's soccer, lacrosse, uh, potentially band practice. 
you won't even know that this underground detention system exists. And that's kind of the beauty of the technology. Above in this uh, cross section, we can see that the system's gonna be about eight feet tall. So you could stand in it if you were um, going through it for maintenance reasons. And again, on the left side of the drawing, the yellow kind of depicts the rough boundary of that underground detention system footprint. So now we're gonna show an exhibit that really shows the uh, product, if you will, of the project that we're working on. What is the benefit to the neighborhood? The blue, as we've shown previously, shows the 100 year flooding based on hydraulic modeling and historic information that we've ascertained. And the red is what we expect to see after the project. There's areas um, up here near Alma and Rex where we still ex expect to see street flooding. On Hawthorne, we still ex expect to see street flooding, but we have done some research to show that that water is still not going in homes. We're really trying to target uh, the area along Berkeley and Alma and Berkeley to really reduce the flooding to keep the floodwaters out of a house. Again, we would love to not have any red left after the project, but sometimes it's physically impossible based on the amount of detention we can put in and the hydraulics behind this. Um, ultimately, if you're asking why are these areas blue and not these other streets, it's simply because these are low-lying areas. Whenever we get flood events and the storm sewer surcharge, the areas that fill up first are the lowest areas in the neighborhood. And you wouldn't know that on a sunny day in the summer, but you've certainly probably experienced it when we have these heavy rain events. Just to give you an idea of what this uh, field will look like after we're done with the project and the school district comes in and installs the turf, um, on the left side of the drawing, this would be north nearest the school building. On the south side, this would be nearest St. Charles Road, or the, I'm sorry, the right side of the drawing would be the south side near St. Charles Road. The roadways that currently surround this, this green space are still gonna remain as is. So we will not be affecting any roads or curbs other than temporarily going through them to run piping and then restoring those um, concrete and asphalt products. Uh, the school district with their engineering staff, or their consultant and engineer, excuse me, have designed a field that can be multi-purpose. Um, you'll see in the next slide how they intend to keep balls and other things within the field because it is a pretty tight footprint within the roadways. Uh, this is an example from Downers Grove South. This is not what their facility is going to look like exactly, but it is a, a good rendering of what it may look like. Um, you may be able to see on the left side here behind the, the soccer goal and the right side, there are taller net systems. Uh, the school district right now is intending to put that in to keep, again, soccer balls, uh, lacrosse balls from flying all over the parking lot. Um, this type of product is kind of a model that a lot of school di districts are going with um, because they find they can use these fields throughout the year quite extensively. And in particular, York High School football field at St. Charles and Spring has had a synthetic turf for a long time, or excuse me, several years now, and um, is able to use it much more readily. Um, Elmhurst University also has that, and I believe the Elmhurst Park District up in Barron's Park has one synthetic turf field. So it's, it's kind of the trend in athletic design for uh, these schools. And again, as you can see from this Downers Grove example, this is a multi-purpose field. It looks like it's striped for football, soccer, probably even lacrosse. So the next steps we have, as I stated, February 1st, the city council will be voting on the hopeful approval of the design build contract with Burke LLC. Um, right now we're planning to start the work in June, right after the school year ends. That could change. Obviously the COVID-19 situation in the world is causing things to constantly uh, change and uh, adapt. We are in constant communication with the school district. Um, I think if, if school for some reason goes remote again, that we will ask to start this project earlier. And obviously the neighborhood would love to have this detention in as soon as possible. And that's our goal as well. So right now we're expecting June, July and August to be the months of construction. That could change a little bit depending on what York High School has in terms of their educational curriculum. But we certainly wanna be respectful of the high school and not be bringing in uh, truck after truck of uh, construction equipment while they are uh, having their high school students um, come and go. It's just not a safe situation. So one of the first activities when we do start 
will be the installation of new storm sewers. Um, the second activity, um, I'm sorry, storm sewers and excavation, because there is heavy excavation to be done just to create room in the ground for the underground detention system. Second, uh, we'll be installing the system itself, and then we'll be backfilling it. Really after that, we're just patching the roadways and the curbing, um, backfilling the system with uh, aggregate so that the aggregate is a type of stone um, so that the school district can lay their field turf when we're done. And we do intend to heavily update our city stormwater website, which I'll show you the, uh, the URL shortly uh, with regular updates. We've done that for all of our stormwater projects, try to do a blog update every one to two weeks so that the residents know what's going on and can see pictures of activity. Again, as I said, we're kind of targeting June 1st right now for a tentative start, June, July, and early August before the fall 21 uh, educational year starts are gonna be heavy construction, a lot of trucking through the York High School parking lot. We're really gonna to try to keep uh, the trucks out of the Berkeley and Alma and Elm Park and Berkeley and Hawthorne area and really contain them to coming on and off St. Charles Road, circling through the York High School site and then leaving the site to minimize the disruption to the residents. Um, we plan to be substantially done by mid-August, as I said before the fall school year starts and District 205, uh, sometime after we're done with our project, we'll install the synthetic field turf. They're still trying to figure out, um, you know, when the city intends to be done, do they wanna leave it, um, sit for a little bit so we have some settlement in the stone. Natural rain falling in the stone is, is definitely a good thing for uh, settlement purposes. So um, there's gonna be some flexibility in their schedule, but I know in talking to the school district, they would prefer to have that synthetic turf installed as soon as possible. We just can't uh, on their behalf dedicate an exact month that they'll be done, but I think everybody intends it to be sometime in 2021. So this is a really bad picture, but I meant it to be a little bit funny on the right with the uh, traffic congestion, um, a little ingest uh, <laughs> insert in the slideshow here. Um, a lot of our projects, we create, we create a lot of dirt and dust for the residents, a lot of traffic issues, that's just, that's the nature of construction. We don't do it on purpose, but in order to put these big pipes and these big underground attention systems in, there are gonna be some growing pains. At this particular site, I think those growing pains will be less for the neighborhood than we normally experience. Again, because the truck traffic and the, um, the just construction access will be off of St. Charles Road at the stoplight, circling through the York High School parking lot and then heading back out to St. Charles to get either out to 83 or 290 and, and onto their um, destination. So again, we're hoping very limited um, traffic issues for the neighborhood. We'll have short-term closures at Berkeley and Alma as we put in some of those four inlet structures that I noted earlier. And then we'll have short-term closures in the parking lot itself. Again, those will be during the summertime when there's a much lighter volume of people at York High School. The restoration is gonna be pretty minimal. Uh, most of the restoration will be contained to York High School parking lot. As we put in these big pipes to bring the water into the underground system, we're gonna to have to uh, backfill and patch the uh, asphalt dry aisles in the parking lot. So that will be the majority of the uh, restoration we'll have to do. But at Berkeley and Alma, we'll have to do some fixing of the curbs, some pavement restoration. Uh, some parkway restorations. And then if we do uh, go across any sidewalks, we always upgrade them to be ADA compliant. Sidewalks are constantly under new regulations from a federal level to make them easier, um, uh, better accessibility, if you will, for impaired persons. So if we do touch a sidewalk, um, we always improve it to the current standards. Most of you who are on this call uh, probably either heard about this through Facebook, um, through the Ward 1 email, or you got a hand-delivered construction notice because you were in the, what I'll call the zone of influence of the project around the high school. Um, we continue, we will continue to deliver construction notices uh, via hand um, as much as we need to. So the people who are directly affected by this, we always strive our, um, strive on ourselves on good communication, constant contact with you. Um, that will be notices. Uh, you'll get to know a lot of the city staff and the people from Burke 
Um, on the bottom of this slide, Nick Tremel's name is listed. He will be what we call the resident engineer. So he'll be the person out there in charge of the day-to-day -day work. Um, he will have a, a Christopher Burke engineering vehicle. Um, his phone number and email will be provided to the affected residents. And fun fact, uh, Nick is a York High School grad. So it's kind of a homecoming for him. We'll have to try to get him a York t-shirt after this project is done. Um, lastly, our city website, which is elmhurststormwaterplan.org, uh, you can see a picture of it in the bottom right, is regularly updated with those blog posts. Um, you can navigate to this website from our main city website, which is elmhurst.org. If you do go to the main page, you can scroll down to the bottom and, and you'll see a, um, a link to stormwater management. We encourage you to look at this uh, website for the, uh, pro, excuse me, blog updates on this project, but there's also uh, policies and procedures if you have sewer backup issues or if you want to put in a drywall in your yard. We have some cost sharing programs that can be very useful to residents, especially if you have not navigated that website before. Lastly, um, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't do a very good introduction. I was so excited to get into the PowerPoint, but um, as I briefly said in the beginning, my name is Kent Johnson. I'm the city engineer. Uh, I've been with the city for 12 years and I run. I currently run the engineering department. Um, also on the phone, as I said, we have several aldermen. Uh, Mike Litwin is a staff civil engineer who's been heavily involved with this project. Uh, we also have two or three members from Christopher Burke engineering design team on the phone. So thank you everybody for, for being on. And I encourage anybody who has questions, if you don't wanna use the chat, if you wanna to talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, please use my email here. We're happy to answer any questions. Um, there's been a number of times where instead of just talking to somebody over the phone or via email, we just meet with them face-to-face -face and talk about how is your property gonna be affected by this project. So please do not hesitate to reach out and do that. Um, at this point, I, that's the end of my presentation. I, again, I tried to keep it pretty brief. I think I went a little bit over the time I wanted to, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, see if I can navigate the chat, see if we can answer any questions. Um, again, the Zoom interactive virtual open house is uh, a little bit new to me. I've certainly been on Zoom calls over the last six months, but I will do my best um, to try to go through any questions. But if you do have a question that doesn't get answered, please feel free to email me at the email address on the screen right now at kent.johnson Kent .johnson at elmhurst.org. So I've restarted my video. For those of you who joined a few minutes uh, late, uh, thanks for joining us. And I'm gonna go into the chat right now and see if I can uh, try to answer any questions. So the first question is from Greg, um, isn't sewer backup due to sewer overloading and thus flooding? So sewer backup on your sanitary system where you get water backing up a floor drain, a toilet, a shower in your basement, that's from the sanitary system backing up. Um, the sanitary system and the storm system in Elmhurst are two completely separate systems. They used to be combined. We separated them in the 70s and 80s. Um, the only connection, and you are uh, heading down the right point, Greg, is when it rains, we get a lot of clear water or rainwater in our sanitary system. What that does is it helps overload the sanitary system. Uh, thus, the system wants to back up and relieve itself, and then it goes into uh, basements, unfortunately, sometimes. So the city has an active program. Every year we line sanitary sewers to make sure we keep that clear uh, rainwater and groundwater out of the system to reduce the um, influx during rain events. Um, we also have ordinances that regulate when you tear down your house and rebuild what you have to do to make sure um, you get rid of old connections. Um, in this particular neighborhood and a lot of uh, what I'll call the central part of Elmhurst between North Avenue and St. Charles, a lot of the older homes were designed with drain tile around the footings of your foundation that gravity flows into your sanitary. So even though you may not see it, every time it rains, there's ground or there's rain hitting the ground around your house, seeping into the, uh, the ground, getting to gravity drain tile and getting into the sanitary system. It is an endeavor that is gonna take the city a long time to try to completely take that out. Uh, Elmhurst is in the same boat as any community around us it's a difficult task to get that clear water out of the sanitary system, but we have multiple uh, programs where we try to reduce it. And if you're a homeowner who has sewer backup, 
we have uh, multiple cost sharing programs that could assist you. So those are on our city website. Uh, but if you'd like to speak to somebody directly, I'd be happy to, to reach out to you. We have um, we have a program that helps if you have a sewer lateral or line leaving your house, if it's in need of repair, we do cost sharing for part of that. And then we also have a check valve or overhead sewer reimbursement where depending on a homeowner's plumbing, you can completely uh, eliminate the sewer backup uh, risk for your house. So again, if you have sewer backup, I encourage you to reach out to the city. The second question is um, about the houses on Hawthorne. Are they actually getting water when the street floods? Uh, there's nowhere for the water to go. I heard you say Hawthorne House is getting water. So just wanted to clarify. In this last flood, many houses had significant damage. So um, if there's anybody on Hawthorne that has had water in your house from the street, please reach out to us. Um, we have with our hydraulic models um, shown that the water definitely leaves the, the curbing, goes beyond the sidewalk. But I think most of the models show that it was, it was getting very close to the house, but not in. So these models are not 100% perfect. We do the very best we can. And that's why we use some historical uh, pictures and information. So if you do live on Hawthorne and you have had water from the street fill up enough where it actually touches or gets in your house, please let us know and uh, we'll look into that for you. Thank you for that. Um, I think Greg had a second question about the sewer backup. Will this mitigate that situation? So if someone has experienced a sewer backup, um, this project we're, we're doing necessarily won't uh, resolve that. But the less water on top of the street, that means the less water that's trying to soak in the ground and get into that sanitary uh, pipe, whether it's our main or your lateral in your front yard. So there could be some ancillary benefit. But if you get sewer backups, um, this particular project won't necessarily uh, eliminate that. And that's where you could use uh, a check valve or an overhead sewer installation to increase or 100% uh, uh, reduce those sewer backups you might have experienced. So John says, um, do you have a picture of what the water inlets look like? Uh, worried about kids and pets around them. I, if you can bear with me and you don't mind me sharing my screen, I'd be happy to show you at another project. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going into Google Maps and uh, I'll show you, I'll share my screen in a second. We did another project on Washington Street between McKinley and uh, Madison where we installed some of these grates. And you'll see they're, they're large, but they're not going to, uh, uh, they're not gonna be a safety issue for kids or uh, dogs. So sorry about the delay there. I'm gonna uh, attempt to share my screen here. Luke, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see Google Earth on the screen? Thank you very much. Everybody needs a good assistant. Um, so this is on Washington Street. This is a project, if you can see the screen, where we put an underground attention. It currently just looks like an open field and the neighbors have been very uh, happy with it. Um, these are the three by three intake structures that if the water fills up in the street more than the height of the six inch curb, it overtops and goes into these structures and then heads into this underground system. Um, this is, these openings are no bigger than what you would normally see in a street uh, where you see a metal curb that takes in water. So that's an excellent question, but uh, we feel these are safe. IDOT uses them all over, the tollway uses them all over and uh, other municipalities do as well. So one other question from, I think Keeley was, is this, uh, presentation being recorded to view at a later date. Um, yes, we are recording. I hope the technology works that we uh, can record everything I'm saying. If um, I see the recording button going, going right now, so hopefully we're successful in that. If not, we will definitely at a minimum post the PowerPoint to our city website, uh, the Stormwater website, and um, hopefully we're successful in doing the whole video and uh, the, the Q&A as well. So another question from Kyle um, regarding the backflow preventer, that's the one at Berkeley and Utley. 
Um, how likely is it that this would just result in backflow and surcharge issues further upstream in the system like on a Hawthorne? So that's an excellent question. We certainly don't wanna do an improvement to any uh, street or any block uh, that is gonna to be to the detriment of another neighbor. Um, Luke Sherry at Burke has modeled it and he's modeled the impact of the backflow preventer plus the work we're doing at York High School. And that's the result of what you see at, at Hawthorne. So it is not going to um, make things worse on Hawthorne. Berkeley happens to be a little bit lower block and that's why their flooding is bigger and they start to see flooding uh, first, I believe. So that's an excellent question, but I think our engineers have vetted that. And I can say, I happen to be driving through the neighborhood, trying to get home to the uh, watch the Blackhawks win the, the cup in 2015. And it started to pour and pour and pour. And I was in this neighborhood. So I have physically seen how the water comes up on Berkeley and Hawthorne extremely fast and almost uh, what I saw, it, it kind of palpitates, and that's the surcharging from the Utley system. Um, if any of you residents have looked out your window and seen the water rise really fast and then go down and rise back up, that's the um, effect of that, that uh, backup from Utley. So we are um, going to hopefully uh, reduce or mitigate a lot of that flooding over there. But I, the point of me telling you that is I've seen it, I've lived it. Um, obviously, if, if I'm a homeowner, I haven't had any structural flooding there, but um, it's just another thing the city staff tries to do to understand uh, as best we can what's going on. So um, let's see. From uh, Oviedo, uh, during last June's floods, Hawthorne residents were told certain streets were intended to flood and the system was act acting as intended. Why the proposed change? Um, so I don't know where that information came from, but I, I think the city's stance has always been that the streets themselves, so curb to curb, sidewalk to sidewalk, they're all part of the drainage system. If a street fills up with one foot of water and it doesn't affect anybody, that's going to happen uh, when we get heavy rains. Um, I live in Villa Park, you know, whether you go to Addison, Villa Park, south to Oak Brook, when you have heavy rains, the low points of every street are gonna fill up with water. And that's okay, it doesn't hurt anybody. Yeah, if somebody drives through, they could damage their car, but all in all, it's part of the drainage system. So the city's goal, uh, goals and the mayor said it over the last five or so years is where we can, where we physically can do it, we wanna keep the water in the right of way, in the public right of way, in that sidewalk to sidewalk. So if we see water on a, on a street during a rain event and it goes away, 10, 20, 30 minutes after the event. We don't consider that as a as something that's wrong with the system. We consider it part of the system. And we'd rather have that water in the street filling up by a foot than in your basement or in your neighbor's basement. So that's how we kind of talk about the drainage system. Some people think that there should never be water on the street. And we certainly think that um, it's an important part of the, the overall drainage system. Um, I think that's it for the chat. Um, I am trying to see if I can pull everybody up. If anybody has their hand raised, I'll maybe give a few seconds to see if anybody has any more questions or wants to raise their hand. Otherwise, it, while people are considering that, I do want to thank you for your time. Um, I know this was an odd time tonight, but we felt like maybe getting the, uh, getting this meeting in at 530 was better than doing it at seven when people are putting kids to bed and, and uh, um, some of you are still working because of our crazy schedules right now in the world. So uh, thank you all very much. We look forward to uh, coming into your neighborhood and, and getting this project done and really providing some good quality stormwater benefits for you. So um, I don't see any other questions and I don't see any hands raised. If you are doing that, I um, apologize. I think Jim Kennedy might have his hand raised. So I will go to Alderman Jim Kennedy first here. Thank you, Kent. Uh, I just want to say uh, great job uh, for all the residents in this area. Um, you know, certainly you guys have lived through a number of storms and have, have dealt with this situation. What I can tell you is that uh, this will be the fourth project that we will have done where we will have used underground detention as a solution. Uh, so you can feel very confident that the technology is proven. Uh, there will definitely be dust. There will definitely be a little bit of chaos. Uh, but, you know, in a very short amount of time, we will uh, be able to complete this project and provide you with the uh, 
the confidence that, um, you know, you have a solution in place. And uh, I too grew up in Elmhurst, you know, lived in a house that uh, was concerned about flooding and, um, you know, had parents that wouldn't go on vacation and, you know, really a lot of angst every time the, uh, you know, the clouds came over and there was rain. So I fully understand how, how you have dealt with this over the recent years as the, the world has changed around us. And uh, just ask you for a little bit of patience. We're almost uh, to the finish line. And, uh, you know, Kent's been a great resource on all the, the projects. The Christopher Burke folks are very approachable. If you have questions, ask them, ask um, your alderman. You can even get a hold of me. Uh, but, uh, you know, you should feel really good that this is a project that's, uh, that's going to be very successful. Thanks, Kent. I see Alderman Deuter raising her hand. I'm going to try to unmute you. I think you should be good to go. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks, yes. Ken. And thanks so much. This was a great presentation. Um, format seemed to work great. I just had a couple of questions that um, the residents might have as well as they see this project come online. You mentioned that the detention itself has the opportunity to drain via gravity and pump. Will they both be utilized or will, they be, will there be certain conditions where one will be utilized instead of the other? Thank you, sorry about that. Technology, I'm still getting used to unmuting myself all the time. Um, there will be some storm events where water gets into the basin and then flows out by gravity. Uh, there will, in the larger events, it will have to be pumped back out. Uh, we're, we're gonna have a backflow preventer on the discharge so that normal water along that angled road on the southwest side of the, of the high school does not back up into the system and take up capacity that would utter, otherwise reduce flooding for the neighborhood. It's a good question. All right, I do not see any other um, questions or hand raise at this point. I'll give kind of a final call to see if I missed anybody. Does not look like it. So thank you all very much. Um, this was actually kind of fun to do this virtually and, and, and uh, see everybody and talk to everyone. And uh, as Alderman Deuter and Alderman Kennedy said, um, we look forward to doing this project. and. I think I, I speak for Alderman Varimus and Alderman Deuter saying we, we look forward to this Ward 1 improvement. So thank you all very much and I hope you have a good evening. Take care.